This is Sakshi Agrawal. My project topic is Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter UART Protocol. So, what is UART? It is a serial communication protocol for sending and receiving data without a clock, without a clock which dignifies the asynchronous part of the UART. Now, we have this complete UAT core. We have another complete UAT code and the transmission and receiving is happening at the same time. What data flow bits? We have four states. One is idle, the start, the stop, and the state where the data is going. Now, we have not taken the battery detection for this project. Let's go ahead. So yeah, this is the complete diagram of what we're doing in a project. We have five main files, which is border generator, receive transmitter. We have P4 for writing and reading. Now, what is a border generator? We'll start from here. So in UART communication, timing is everything. Since UART is asynchronous, both the transmitter and receiver need to agree on when to send or sample bits. That's where the border generator comes in. The border defines how many bits per second are transmitted. For example, a baud rate of 9600 means 9600 bits per second. To accurately detect each bit, especially in noisy conditions, UIT receivers use a technique called oversampling, commonly 16x. I will show the the files along with it. Let's go to Vivardo and see how the code runs. Well, uh, for those who do not know how to create a file in Vivardo, I am using 2022 version. Here we create it. You can just directly get click on Add Sources. We have these three options. The first option is to connect your files, input, outboards, and other constraints with your board constraints, like where from, which which output is showing, which uh, like A, B, C, whatever. Now, the second is the design sources and third is the simulation sources. For now, we need a design source. We can go on text. We can go create file, name your file, I will write bold rate. And then you click on OK. OK, that name already exists. So I can just say bold rate, right? So yeah, so it creates. You can just click on finish. There it creates the file. And you just need to give some names, A, B, C, uh, import names. And then you click on OK, the file will be in your design source but now i do not need any extra files so i will can i would cancel this one uh we start with the board region data i already explained what is the board region data here we have taken parameters which n and n n is a number of counter bits counter bits are 10 because it includes eight data flow bits one stop bit another one start bit we have this n61 why because we are taking example of 10 megahertz frequency 9600 baud rate and this comes after calculating uh sampling is 16 so we multiply the 9600 with 16 and this m is equal to division of 10 megahertz divided by this multiplication now so it has a simple logic when when if there is reset the counter is zero otherwise the counter goes to this now what is next Next is when counter reaches its m minus one value, it goes to zero. Otherwise, the counter keeps increasing plus one. And the tick is when the counter reaches its final value, the tick goes to one. Otherwise, it's zero. So that's how the board rate generator works. Now, other files are receiver and transmitter. or spare use? So transmitter side puts multiple bytes of data before sending them serially. Uh, so the UART transmitter is responsible for sending data serially one bit at a time over the TX line. It wraps each byte with a start bit, optional parity, and stop bits. What does a UART receiver does? The receiver listens on the RX line. We have this RX line, detects a falling edge, start bit, start bit is falling edge, and then samples the line at precise intervals using the sample tick we discussed. This is our sample tick. So when sample thing goes on, it detects. Next is uh, we have these four states, which is I do start data. So I'll show with the code for receiver, and then I'll go for the transmitting. Let's switch to the body. We have UART RX unit, which is the receiver. So we have this parameter, which is V bits eight, which is the data bits in other data world. We have this top bit and sample. 
we have uh, these input and outputs as required. We have done this using the state machine, uh, state machine flow, where we have these four states as explained, which is the ideal state data store. So, ideal state is wait for the start bit. It has to be like when the start is one, when there is one, the start is done. Data state read eight databits using oversampling. Stop it is very fast, stop it is high. Uh, then we have this done state, which is states, which is the flag and make the secret data available. Uh, we have given those values for the state machine. Next, we there's this logic that when if it's reset, state is idle because yeah, it's reset. The tick is the tick register is zero, and bits register is zero, data register is zero. Else the state goes to a next state, data register go to a tick next, and bit register go to n bit next, data register go to data next. Now always at the start begin. Next state is equal to state data ready, which means it's zero, which is falling edge. This is our falling edge. Uh, tick next is tick register, and bit next is n bit register. Like we generally like defines everything to the next state because here is the case of start. So uh, case of falling edge. So case state, if it's idle state and if there is negation of Rx, then it begins next state is equals to start, tick is equals to zero. Why neg negation? Because when data value goes low, start condition. Start if sample tick, if there is a sample tick, then if tick register equals to seven, next cell state is equals to data, tick next zero and which zero. If it's a data state, then you count and then you keep transmitting. And if it's a sample uh, stop for the stop state, we check the sample stick. And the sample tick goes to SB tick minus one, we stop it. So next is our TX unit. Same uh, parameters and now uh, these variables. We also have these four states here. And according to that, it works like these are things. Then, yeah, if in ideal state, the TX next to one, transmit that. No data in FIFO and FIFO is not empty. Next state is uh, start next to zero. If it's start state, like you are starting the transmission, then okay. you try T where TX next goes to zero. And if uh, there is sample, they can just 15, we can the next state is equals to data. Same for the uh, data state and same uh, for the stop state. Now, after that, we have this memory units, which is a major role. In our board, we have done it in this way that it shows in our seven segment display that the uh, memory is empty, memory is in use, and memory is full. So, now how does that work? So, FIFO RX unit, we have these parameters, we have these variables, which is also inputs empty and full. We have registers. So for always at the positive edge flow, if write enabled, if it's write enabled, like you are writing, memory current write address is write data in, write in data out, write enabled. So uh, when there is this reason, your current write address is zero, current write address is zero, FIFO full zero, FIFO empty one, because it's empty here. Else, current write address, current write address buffer, Current write address, current read address before fee for full is full. Now let's go for here. So next write address is current write address plus one. Next read address is plus one. As this button press logic. So when we press the button, it keep, it keeps transmitting one by one by which I'll show you in the end. Have this transmission which is quietly the same because is also working the same way. Next, we have this button debouncer which helps debouncing our bits on the screen. Uh, then we have this complete top model where we include all the panels and write the, the final data. Let's go. The uh, 
So these are all the codes and this is the whole explanation. Now to implement this project, we need, we need, we need putty software, which is, what is to connect that, you need to connect the putty software, which your, which your port. So in your device manager, see if there is this USB serial port given, connect this with a serial line port name, speed, and click on open. It will show. Now I'll show you the demonstration of this project. So yeah, this is basis three board this here. Board. This is the PFOS entity. Here this is uh, the terminal. Here I'll give there. the inputs. I will do this input A, e, B, C, C, and D. After giving four inputs, now just shows the terms C4 family is full now. Now we show and this is the output which here boxes that are values which we give. The output will be P, C, D, E because we have taken one plus. For the ASCII characters. It shows B, C, D, E because the output comes with plus one SKI character. It does also show the ASCII character in the LED lights. Now we'll go to the constraint file which we have used for it. Constraint file we have used LEDs. This is our clock. We have used LEDs. We have used second segment display. We have used buttons. We have used this USB RS232 interface. Now, after all these codes, you check on we, the next step is to run synthesis and now implementation. After everything is done, you run synthesis is done, implementation is done. Go on file and export. Okay, before that, you need to generate your bitstream file. Once the bitstream first into the implementing synthesis implementation, then generate the bitstream. Once everything is done, you export your bitstream file. Once the bitstream file is exported, you connect the dot bit, the board, and here open the hardware manager. Uh, open target as the board is not connected now open the target auto connect once the board is recognized click on program device and then your program will be your board will be programmed and you can perform the form as i showed in the video as i showed in the demonstration video so yeah this is basis three board here so yeah that's it for the project thank you